Once again, we're grateful for everyone who's come out tonight. This is a place where we come together to think, <clears throat> to think profitably, and uh, to think extensively. I really don't care for a non-thinking religion that uh, glories in hype. Although when you get the truth in you, it does, it does uh, produce some hype. <laughs> Tonight, this will be our 17th installment in this series, God's Attitude Toward the Sin of Believers. See, the New Covenant tells us a lot about God. Under the New Covenant, God is able to divulge more of him, about Himself than he could under the first covenant. You learn more about God's nature. There's a lot of I wills, I wills, I wills. The old covenant uh, dealt more with exposure of man's ineptitude, and it was you will, you will, you will, you know. Yeah. And you learn about God's objective the law didn't tell anyone that God was willing to save. It didn't, mm -hmm. That wasn't a point of it. It didn't say that. That's right. But the new covenant does. It shows, yeah. it shows that God is willing to save. Yeah. You, you don't have to beg God to save you. Mm -hmm. yeah. We learn that God does. He hates sin. He really does. No matter who commits it, even if sin is transferred to Christ, he hates it even there. Yes, amen. He hates sin. He won't allow it in his presence. That's why Satan and his angels were expelled. It can't, sin cannot stay where God is. See, in every... Every assembly has to make up its mind. Do we want God here or sin? It, it yeah. comes, boils right down to that. Yeah, right. What are we going to value most? God is among us or we have a bunch of sinners among us? Which one? I recommend that the desiring God be the thing. Amen. And his objective, let's, let's, uh, his, his objective includes getting rid of sin and ultimately getting rid of the sinner. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. In between there, he is a provision so the person doesn't have to remain in the category of sinner. But if, he, uh -huh. if he's in that category, sinner, yeah. when he leaves this world, yeah. or when Jesus comes, if he's in that category, yeah. he is out. Amen. And the day of judgment is going to justify that being done. And when Jesus comes, if you're not in that class, you'll be saved, and the day of judgment will justify that that was the right thing to do. <clears throat> now you'll notice in our text that as the Spirit elaborates on sin, He refers to it in different ways. In, in Jeremiah 31, he said, "Their sins and iniquities. I will remember no more, and I'll be merciful of their unrighteousnesses. He said, got sin, iniquities, unrighteousnesses. Also in this promise of Jeremiah 33, 8, where he said, he cleansed them from all their iniquity, see there, whereby they have sinned against me. Yeah. See, there it is, another view. I will pardon their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed. Yeah. See, I guess that sin, sin is a big, big item. That's right. It's a big item. Let's look at this just briefly. <coughs> Cleanse them. From some iniquity, I'll cleanse them from their iniquity. In other words, iniquity... <coughs> 
which is perversity or contempt or just <coughs> low down living, it has a lingering effect upon the person. Even if the person didn't do that thing anymore, he has to be cleansed from it. Even if it was like Adam and Eve, it was just like one. It has a lingering effect. It has to be cleansed. The person has to be rid of the after effects of sin as well as Amen. the immediate contamination of it himself, uh, itself. And notice where they sinned against me. So sin's always deliberate. I understand that sometimes the person is under the law particularly it mentioned they were ignorant of the, they were ignorant that they did, but see they still wanted to do what they did. Uh -huh. yes. Even though they were ignorant of that it was a sin, they yeah. still uh -huh. they still weren't forced into doing it. They did what they wanted to do. Uh -huh. So sins against God. Yeah. <laughs> David saw <laughs> David saw this, he said, against thee and thee only. Well, he sinned against Bathsheba, and he sinned against Uriah also, but that was under the major category of the only. So when you commit a sin, whether it, uh, whatever it involves, whether it's self-gratification or degrading someone else or harming someone else or thief, whatever, it's basically against God. That is, you, you have bear God's image. And when you sin, you have violated that image. You have conducted yourself contrary to the way you were fundamentally made. And he said, I'll, I'll cleanse them from all their iniquity. I'll remove the after effects. Boy, boy, <laughs> that's a blessed thing to think. Thank God for that. I'll remove the after effects. He would say, well, I don't know if that's so. Sometimes people who smoked rather all their life, they have to live with a hole in their throat, you know. Yeah, but that's not the only body they're going to have. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the only body they're going to have. Yeah. Yes, there are some people whose bodies are initiated and deformed because of sin. Mm -hmm. But that's, they're going to have another body with which the, all the after effects are going to be removed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah, and I'm going to pardon all their iniquities. Uh, he's not going to pretend they didn't exist. He's not going to pretend they didn't weren't committed. I'll I'll pardon them. I'll remove the indebtedness. I'll take away the offense against me. See? I'll conduct myself toward them without these sins in mind anymore. See, I'm going to pardon them. <laughs> When you come into Christ, see, God doesn't deal with you as the person you were. Mm -hmm. yeah. When yeah. Paul, for instance, was converted and he became a servant of God, God didn't deal with him as the persecutor of the church. Mm -hmm. That's how he dealt with it. He pardoned that. He didn't bring that up all the time. Yeah. Huh? Not God. He just brought that up to Saul of Tarsus. He didn't bring it up to Paul the Apostle. Remember how you... Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, see, that's what pardon means. It's not Amen. brought up anymore. That's right. So we don't want to bring up the past Amen. of somebody we know and that's, that's been right. forgiven. We, we don't want to bring it up. Mm -hmm. And don't let Satan bring yours up. Yes. You've been pardoned. You don't want to be wallowing in a sense of guilt all the time. Uh, you've been pardoned. I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness. In other words, it's completely illogical from a human point of view that God could ignore your unrighteousness. This is completely illogical from a human point of view. Because sin is against God. How can he like... Well, there's a way he can... Uh, there's a way he can ignore it, be merciful. What Jesus accomplished so changed the environment that God can give mercy where before he could only give wrath. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It wasn't because the person changed. Yes. Yeah. See? 
it wasn't the result of human reconstruction of the life, so to speak. It was because of something was done That's right. Amen. Amen. that allowed in him in this new covenant yeah. to uh, remember his sins no more, be merciful to their unrighteousnesses. Mm -hmm. That means he wouldn't bring them up again. That's what it meant. Mm -hmm. Oh, Satan will bring them up to you. Satan will bring them up to you. And, and if you're sensitive, every time he brings them up, it'll bother you. Uh -huh. And you've you got to go to have the blood of Christ cleanse your conscience from dead works. Sometimes, sometimes he'll bring them up to you because he knows if he can get you to thinking about those things enough, you'll do them again. Uh -huh. He knows that. That's his strategy. But God's merciful now to your unrighteousness. He'll, he will not bring them up. God will never... Bring your sins that have been removed. He will never bring them up to you. Yeah. If they're brought up, God didn't do it. Yeah. You remember that now. God didn't do it. If they're brought up. God did not do it. It was the devil that did it. <coughs> their sins and iniquities I'll remember no more. <coughs> I'll send by a few dis descriptions of this. Sin means missing the mark. Is you aimed at the bullseye and you shot the neighbor's window out instead. Yeah, uh -huh. See, it just missed the mark. Uh -huh. Iniquity means perversity or contempt to violation of law. Uh -huh. It's a very deliberate, low, at a low down level, very, very deliberate. Transgression means to rebel or revolt uh -huh. against God. Unrighteous means to violate the law or to be unjust. Now let me draw to your attention that under the law, God did not forget sin. Yeah. Over periods of hundreds of years, and He didn't, mm -hmm. He didn't forget. Right. He bring them up. <laughs> let me give you a few examples. Numbers fourteen twenty three. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. That's about something they'd done a yeah. considerable time before this. Yeah. I'm not going to forget this. Mm -hmm. This is God. Now, this is the people want to live by law. This is the kind yeah. of thing Amen. you're going to get used to. Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me. Oh, it's the past. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those that are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. Me? They provoked me. See, that's remembering their sins. He was remembering them. Judges 2.20. The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he said, Because of this people hath, see, mm -hmm. hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice. That's a past. Mm -hmm. He remembered it. Sometimes he'd repent and wouldn't continue like destroying them. He'd left the plague or something. But he remembered mm -hmm. he didn't forget their sin. Amen. He remembered it. Amen. Here's 1 Kings 21, 22. And I will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Debat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. See, that, was, that, happened, that happened historically. Yes, uh -huh. But he remembered it. Again, 2 Kings 21, 15. Because they have done that which was evil in my sight, and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Israel, even unto this day. So he never forgot anything. Yeah, that's right. That Israel did. Amen. He remembered when they murmured on the banks. Yes. Yep. He remembered when they murmured in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He remembered when they disbelieved when they came to the border of the promised land. See, he, re he remembered. He, mm -hmm. he kept on... Remember, now our text said he will remember to sin no more. We're talking about the new covenant now. It's yeah. a different kind of an arrangement. <coughs> Jeremiah 8, 18. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in the far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? They have provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities. Mm -hmm. See? That wasn't like this happened today. This happened prior to that, but God didn't forget it. Yeah. Jeremiah 32, 30. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. 
For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from day from the day that they built it, even unto this day that I should remove it from before my face. See? Kept on piling up. God didn't forget. See, the law binders, they never tell people this. Under the law, there is no cleansing from sin. It's never purged under a system of law. Conscience is never cleansed. Not under a system of law. Not even a holy, righteous, spiritual law. In Judges 35, 16, because the sons of Jonadab and the sons of Rechab have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people hath not hearkened to unto me. He didn't forget. <coughs> Hundreds of thousands of sacrifices were offered. Hundreds of thousands of people were slain in plagues and so forth. God never did forget it. He didn't forget those sins of Noah's day. He didn't forget it. Why not? It would have been unrighteous for him to forget it. God cannot forget sin without some proper motivation. Holy motivation. You take Jesus out of the equation, well, hope is all gone. All hope is gone. He inspired writers to write about their sin. <clears throat> Holy Spirit said, write down David's sin. Tell the whole world. Yeah. Told, he, he sent Nathan to tell him he, but sin was forgiven. Uh -huh. hmm? But it, that just meant that in anticipation of Christ uh -huh. was forgiven. But God, God made sure that we knew about it. Right. Uh -huh. He made sure the whole world knew about what David did. Yes. I thought what it did with the church. I don't know if any of the apostles were prodigious sinners. I don't think they were, but I, if they were, it, nothing was said about it. Even Paul, when, when God would send Paul someplace, he wouldn't send someone ahead and say, no, let me tell you about Paul. He, 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 persecuted, he persecuted my son. He cleansed him and remembered his sin. No, Amen. no more. Right. <laughs> the result of of sin not being uh, forgotten is that the conscience is bludgeoned with guilt. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the effect. I understand some people have gone insane with the guilt of sin. It just kind of finally beat them down to the ground. They lost their mind. But under the law, see, there was no cleansing of the conscience. Even at the most holy time, the Day of Atonement, there was only once a year. You think at least once a year people could get a break huh? from guilt. Just once a year we could start off with a clean conscience. Once a year, no. no. Uh -uh, not under the law. The point I'm making here is God remembered sin. Before Christ, sin was remembered. Hebrews 10, 1 through 3 goes over some of the uh, aspects of the Day of Atonement. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they have ceased, would, would they have, not they have ceased to be offered? There's no need for sacrifice if the conscience has been yeah, purged. Uh -huh. yeah. Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is <laughs> not a forgetting of sin. Uh -huh. There's a remembrance. Right. Yeah. Again, made of sins every year. Yeah. All the ones, not just the ones of last year. Yeah. Huh? It didn't cleanse the conscience from the sins of that year right. and or the past years. Yeah. So what it did, it stirred up 
Now see, under the new covenant, when you come to this table, if sins had not been purged, this would be the place for you to remember it, your sins. That'd be what you'd be remembering when you come around here. But this is not what we what we remember. <laughs> See, our conscience has been purged. We don't pretend like we didn't sin. I mean, we we know what we were. But it doesn't condemn us anymore. We, we're thankful now that we're not that anymore. We would, as some person once said, I, I'm not what I ought to be. I'm, I'm not what I want to be. But by the grace of God, I'm not what I was. That's right. Amen. The, the law couldn't offer that That's right. to anybody. <laughs> so during the old uh, covenant, however, God threw out some hints that he had, there was coming a time when he was actually going to cleanse and purge sin. There were some people, I'm sure, that this was a very blessed sound yeah. when they heard it. Yeah. Here, here's some of his expressions. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be like scarlet, they'll be white as snow, though they be like crimson, they'll be as wool. Uh -huh. Now, we don't have any record of scripture of anybody who actually, you know, carried that out. Now, everybody in Christ is... See, God's reason, if you come before God and reason yeah, uh -huh. about your sins, you'll come away clean. That's, right. yeah. That's what will happen. Why? Because you're under that kind of a covenant. Right. You're under a covenant where what had to be done was done independently of you. Uh -huh. Amen. See? Yeah. You don't want to have anything to do with an approach to religion that depends upon you. Yes. This doesn't take away the necessity of obedience and all this, but in all this, you're depending on someone else yes. Yes. who did satisfy God. Amen. God saw the travail of his soul, and he was satisfied. Yes. That's right. He's still satisfied. Amen. And if you're satisfied with what satisfied him, yeah. he'll be satisfied with you. Amen. Why do people professing uh, Christians, why, why do they sin? Why do they laugh back? It's because they're not satisfied with Jesus. Now, it could be a variety of reasons why. I mean, it's not because they thought a lot about Jesus and concluded, well, he's not what he was cracked up to be. It isn't that type of thing. It's that Satan succeeded in diverting them so something looked better to them than Christ. And the seriousness of it is that God was merciful to their unrighteousnesses yes. and doesn't remember them anymore. And then for them to turn back to them, see, this This is serious. It's not Amen. something like making a mistake. That's right. yeah. It's a very serious matter. <coughs> Let's reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, they'll be white as snow. And there's other 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 texts which I won't uh, go into at this time. Like one prophet said, I'll, I've blotted out your transgressions like a thick cloud. I've cast them into the depths of the sea. And there's various hints that God was going to do something about this conscience. Yes, amen. This conscience problem. Now, some of us uh, yeah. were bad enough that we would never have been able to complete our lives without being beaten down by our past uh -huh. yeah. if God hadn't have done something about this. Yeah. Yeah. But the new covenant, he has done something about this. Amen. Their sins and iniquities be taken away. <coughs> sin is not to be remembered. If, it, see, if sin is not to be remembered, it had to be taken away. He couldn't be like overlooked or forgotten. It had to be taken away. 
The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Somebody had to pay the penalty yes. for what you did. Uh -huh. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, when this registers on your soul, you become a slave to Christ and a willing one at that. Yes. Something had to be done about it. it could, God just couldn't wink at it. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. See, the law didn't have any mercy on this. God has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So for sin to be cursed, it couldn't be done at a distance, like, like you pass a law that says we're not going to remember this anymore. It, it had to be cursed in a man. That sin had to be transferred to some other man before God could curse it. Because if he curses it in you, that's the end of you. Yes. See? Now the New Covenant is announcing this. Well, this is, this is a piece of good news. <coughs> the law worked wrath because sin causes wrath to rise up and God. So the Romans 4.15 says, Because the law works wrath. For where no law is, there's no transgression. Now the sin that occurred in Noah's day, that, uh -huh. that provoked God. Yeah. It was on a global, it had to really, it had to really get to great measures to provoke God. When the law came, the tolerance level <laughs> went down. And the law worked wrath. That is, it caused God to get more angry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's look at some exhibits of this. <coughs> Numbers 11, 1. When the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. His anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them at the uttermost parts of the camp. This is God now. We're talking about God here. Talk about God and the effects of sin upon God. And if you take Jesus out of the equation, you've got no alternative but the Numbers 11 approach. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Numbers 32, 13. The Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them, he made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and all the generation that had done the evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. See? Yeah. This is God's reaction. Now remember, God has to do something about sin. That's His nature. That's His nature. His, his nature provokes Him. He has to do something about sin. He did it in Christ. But if that, if what He did about sin is ignored, that magnifies the sin, so that it's larger than it was before. <coughs> Numbers twenty-eight nineteen. I'm showing you how God uh -huh. sin without some go between some without sin being punished uh -huh. here's what happens Deuteronomy 29:18 lest there should be among you a man or a woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away from the Lord our God to go and serve other gods of these nations lest there be any among in any lest there be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood yeah, this, this is this is so large. This is hard to to see because of the fog that's been emitted yes. in the world. But God can't tolerate sin in His people. Amen. After all said and done about the love of God and the love of Christ, the love of God pinioned Christ to a cross. <clears throat> The wrath of God is poured out upon him, and he tread the wine press of the wrath of God alone, and he is less tolerant of sin now than he ever was before. Amen. Cause, what? Because a remedy for sin is in place. Amen. Lamentations 2.2, 2, The Lord has swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob, and hath not pitied. This is without Christ. This is a God without Christ. To people he had chosen. 
people he had delivered, yeah. people he'd fed, hmm. people he'd led. Yeah. <coughs> He hath thrown down. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds, and of the daughter of Judah, he hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and princes thereof. That's what he did. Without, without a mediating sacrifice. <coughs> now, uh, imagine with me the quantity of wrath. That rose up when all the sin of the world, mm -hmm. when God was dealing with all the sin yeah. of the world. Yeah. Now I've showed you some examples of what the wrath of God did when just a just a, a portion of the human race, did a, and a portion of that portion sin. What happened when it rose up? Now imagine <coughs> what would have happened when you, the sins of the world yeah. or this iniquity of us all was laid upon Christ. Now, now imagine what this did. To God's wrath. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've shown you what God's oh. attitude towards sin is. Right, yeah. Where it is, is is beside the point. Uh -huh. It's beside the point where it is. When all the sin of the world was laid upon Christ, imagine. When he made him to be sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. To be the, the wholeness of sin. Yeah. He didn't just make him to be a sin. Uh -huh. He made him to be sin. What was in Christ was the composite of all the sin of all time. Amen. Yes. Now imagine how that awakened God's wrath. Yes. Uh -huh. I've shown you what God thinks yeah. about sin, what God does. Now uh -huh. we don't have to guess at this. That's right. Now imagine. Look what it look what the sin of the world did in Noah's day. Look what look what it cost. Just imagine what rose up. Uh -huh. The wrath of God. <laughs> when Jesus in his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree. Yeah. <coughs> imagine, you no know, person can imagine yeah. uh -huh. right. the hammer blow yeah. Amen. that came upon Christ. Yes. Amen. God was angry yes. right. when Christ died. Yeah. Amen. Why was he angry? Because he confronted the whole of sin. Yes. Uh -huh. It was contrary to his nature. It was against everything he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he had to go through this if he was going to institute a, me, a covenant yeah. in which he would not remember men's sins anymore. Yeah. If that was going to happen, this other had to happen. That's right. Nobody else volunteered for this. Yeah. Jesus did. I, I come. I come to do your will, O oh God. Amen. He, but even this was hard for Jesus. Yes. Even this was hard for Jesus. Um, he said, if it's possible. Because he was, he was of God also. The fullness of the God had built him bodily. So you can imagine how, the, how this sin impacted Jesus. Right. Yeah. When the sin of the world was laid upon Jesus, now ponder yeah. the impact uh -huh. of that upon his spirit. If he yeah. couldn't stand to see the temple... Yeah. <laughs> turned into a house of merchandise. Yes. <laughs> what do you think this, what kind of impact do you think this had upon Christ? Mm -hmm. And when he anticipated it, if there was any possible way for him to avoid it, mm -hmm. see, it isn't because he was scared to die, that is what it is. It was, it was the impact of all this right. sin. I imagine Satan tried to convince him he couldn't survive it. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. But he did. He survived it, and uh, God brought him back. That's right. Amen. He's the only person he could bring back yes. Amen. after punishing mm -hmm. sin. When punished sin in Israel, he didn't bring him back. See, when they slew them, you know, with these plagues, he didn't bring them back. He, yeah. They didn't come back from that. Now, God, Jesus has taken away the sin of the world. He took it away in this sense. He took it away from God's recollection. See? So, and if you yourself can get into Christ, mm -hmm. he'll not remember your sin. Yeah, amen. Out of Christ, yeah. he remembers it all. That's right. And you're living on borrowed time. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. 
because you're living on borrowed time if you're out of Christ and, and a sinner. Well, of course, you'd be a sinner, but you're living on borrowed time. This message has to get out to people. Sinners have to be told, listen, there's a way out of sin, but until you take this, you are on bar. You, we don't know when God's going to take you out. But he's going to do it eventually. He's going to do it. If he doesn't do it in the foreseeable future, you're going to, you're going to leave the world. If you leave this world without being in Christ, <laughs> you don't stand a chance at all. But if you leave this world in Christ, you don't stand a chance of not being a fully exonerated. <laughs> And if you're afraid of your past to be made known, so what if it is? You can testify, but you cleanse me from that, oh, Father. It's not on me anymore. You can ask the angels, examine me. Examine me. You'll find, you'll not find any guilt or spot on me, these white robes I got. There's no spot or wrinkle or any such thing on them. That's what you have in the New Covenant. God remembers sin no more for those who are in the place from which sin has been purged. Right, now, here's the genius of the New Covenant. In the New Covenant, he takes you out of the sin-infested area and sets you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and sin's been purged out of those places. Then he tells you now, set, set your affection on things above now. Live with the upward view going to get pulled down to the earth because if you do, it will not be long until you'll be feeling guilty. Yeah. And maybe you'll have a just cause to feel guilty. <laughs> as you walk in the light, and somebody's having many places, as you walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses you from all sin. Mm -hmm. See, and there's no confession in that verse, 1 John 1, 7. Uh -huh. There's no confession of sin there. Right. Uh -huh. If you walk in the light, as he is in the light, yes. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you, see, yes. keeps you clean from all sin, and you'll be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Yes. Amen. The proclivity to sin will get yes. smaller. Until you get rid of the flesh, you'll still have to wrestle with this uh -huh. inclination. But the inner man is waxing stronger and stronger. Yes. And the outward man is waxing weaker and weaker. See? <laughs> yeah, well, brother, it's wonderful to uh, Amen. contemplate. I, I hope you can see the superiority of the new covenant here. Mm -hmm. This is God's attitude towards the sin of believers. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see it. Yeah. Does that mean we can sin freely? <laughs> Actually, don't. People should stop being foolish. Right. Stop yes. being foolish. The truth of the matter is that in Christ you don't want to sin. Amen. And if you do, you'll be beating the path to the throne of all grace. Right. See? See, he's made provision. If, he didn't say when, he said if yes. any man sin, we have an advocate. Wait. Yes. Wait, Father, wait. He's on, he's on his way. Yeah. <laughs> He's on his way to the throne. He's on his way to the throne of grace. Now let's hold off now. Wait. And let me cleanse him. That heritage is yours in Christ Jesus. You have, you'll have it all your life by the grace of God. Amen. <coughs> Brother Robert has our exhortation tonight.